July 25th to order and ask everybody to stand, please. Uh, two student representatives, Adam and Bonnie, are going to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Are we ready? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. If you could please call the roll. Rob? Yes. Cousins? Fisher? Griffin? Here. Hubbard? Here. Michelle? Present. Keo? Here. Keating? Here. I'm D. Gregorio? Here. Can I say that? Yes. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Paul and Donna are, are, neither one of them is going to make it tonight. They both did notify me. Donna just most recently. She's still having car troubles. Um, so we are down to item C on the agenda, which is approval of the meeting minutes. Um, we had the city council work session minutes in the packet and the um, minutes from the July 11th meeting provides uh, a supplement that's on the pass. Is there anyone who would like to make a motion to approve either one or both sets of the Moved by Griffin, thank you. Can I get a second? Second, second by a while, thank you. Ms. Griffin, I did not see anything. I have another one thing. Okay. Um, and under the council comments on um, the right for the regular meeting for the um for Dave Lutton's presentation. This was a question I asked about defining attainable housing, not affordable housing. They're two different things. Where am I looking at that? Sorry. It's page five of the supplement, the second bullet. Yeah, okay. Yep. So you want attainable? Yes, I didn't ask about affordable housing, I asked about attainable housing. Yeah, okay. See that? Okay. Good comment. Any other notes on the minutes? James. Okay. Uh, please call the vote to approve the minutes. Hubbard? Yes. Cousins? Uh, I'm Michelle. Yes. Griffin? Yes. Arab? Yes. Kia. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. We are down to prearranged participation. And I believe we have a representative, Marie, right, from Meter. Yes. Can you, you want to introduce? Oh, there we go. Yes. Um, Mike Cloak from Meter Investments is here via Zoom to give you an annual report on our investments. So I will let him take it away. Great. Welcome, Michael. Hello, thank you. Can everybody hear me like this? Perfectly. Yes, no? Okay, good. Yeah. And um, do you need me to share my screen or does everybody have it in the information in front of them? I think you could share it just for those online. Sure. You don't mind, Mike? Uh, it says host has disabled participant screen sharing. Hey, Josh. Let's see if Josh can fix that. Josh, you're under, under the green bottom bar. Hey, there we go. Okay. Yeah, okay, so we can see it. Great. So let's kind of dive into things. This is more of a kind of a top level view. Not really going to get into the finite um, points of all of the things that are going on economically and, and in the marketplace, mostly because all of you, they're so prevalent. Everyone is aware of them. Everyone's aware of what's going on with inflation. Everyone is aware of what's going on with the economy. So it would just be uh, taking up more time than we have to go into all of those. But there, we did want to kind of touch on a couple of things here. 
the first is how the, the Fed's rate outlook has evolved uh, amongst inflation and inflationary pressures. And what this graph shows is how the Fed's outlook for the future has changed from uh, March of 2021 until now. Um, and the, each of these dotted lines shows you that as of those time periods where the Fed's outlook uh, was projected to be. Now, the thing that is relevant for our purposes is that the if you see here at the top, the June 2022nd uh, outlook, we are actually now starting to see in spite of all of the rate hikes that you're hearing about, we're probably gonna have another, well, not probably, we almost certainly will have a rate hike uh, this week, whether it's 75 basis points or a full percent, uh, there is still some debate about. But if you notice there at the end of that June 2022nd graph, the Fed is actually seeing rates to start going back down as soon as um, either August or December of next year. That could be sooner, it could be later. There's not a lot of certainty there. But the longer term outlook for the Fed is definitely in a downwards uh motion okay so this is a summary of the various um indices and the real gdp uh the unemployment rate as you see the core pc and the fed funds rate showing how um, things have evolved over um the last few months and what the outlooks are going to be for the next couple of years as you all know, the Fed has been trying to engineer what they call a soft landing, which is when they lower the growth rate down, not into the negative, uh, but just slow it down. And unfortunately, they've only managed to do that two out of the last nine times they've tried that. So while they are still showing here that uh, the um, the various growth rates and so forth, they're still showing in a positive history and the numbers don't support these projections, uh, which is not to say it's not gonna happen, um, but it's not really favorable. As I said, only the, over the last nine times they've tried to do that, uh, they've only managed to do it twice. The other seven times we've ended up in a recession. So the labor market uh, remains tight. Job growth was 372,000 last month. Um, the, the, the job openings are far exceeding the number of unemployed workers, as you can see here, by almost uh, two to one. Um, and so there's still a lot of uh, there's still a lot of volatility. There's still a lot of trouble in, in uh, getting people to apply for jobs and getting people to take jobs. Um, they're, they've been calling this. You probably heard this in the news: the, the Great Resignation. Um, is people coming back from COVID or people not coming back from COVID, as it were, the, a lot of uh, gig workers, a lot of people that have struck out into consulting and so forth. And so that has also uh, contributed to the situation that we are finding ourselves in now economically. So the uh, inflation, as I said before, you know, we don't need to go into a lot of this inflation. Everybody knows and has seen the inflation, although uh, we have seen gas prices come down a little bit uh, from its high of a few weeks ago, but uh, you know, I was at the grocery store today and there's still, it's ridiculous, some of the food prices that they're charging, um, sometimes 50% more than they were charging just six months ago. And so there's still inflationary pressures on those everyday things. It's no longer just COVID related issues or uh, things that are recovering like the service industry as a result of the shutdown because of COVID. It's going across all sectors of the economy. So this is what we call the Treasury, the U.S. Treasury yield curve. And this, uh, the arrow represents the five-year yield curve, which is where we operate from zero to five years. We've seen a lot of growth from December of 2021 um, a tremendous amount of growth and even a lot of growth since March of this year. And so as a result, uh, reinvestment of maturing securities uh, for the portfolio has been very good. It's in the, it's been in the 250 to 3% range, or excuse me, and maybe a, a little bit, even a little bit higher than that. Um, and so we are starting to 
uh, as I mentioned before, the Fed outlook on the negative, it says, as you can see here, the yield curve inversion starts to set in as the two and the 10 year spreads narrowing. Now, uh, historically also, when you see, this is just a little kind of inside baseball economic information, when you see the two year and the 10 year invert, which is to say that the two year has a higher yield than the 10 year for uh, longer than a day, longer than a week, that's usually a typical harbinger of a recession. So we have started to see the two and the 10 year inverting uh, a couple of times over the last month, and it has started to happen more and more frequently. So uh, that has been a pretty accurate, as I said, determinant or, or indicator, excuse me, of uh, a potential recession that is on the horizon. Obviously, the question is, when does the recession hit? Are we already in a recession? Are, is it this year? Is it next year? So on and so forth. So um, that's one of the uncertainties that, you know, those of us in the fixed income markets and those of us in uh, business are dealing with is trying to figure those those things out. So um, before I go into specifics about your portfolio, does anybody, I kind of ran through that quickly, but does anybody have any questions for me about any of that information? Doesn't look like it, Mike. Okay, fantastic. So let's talk a little bit about the portfolio. Uh, we have just over $4 million of yours invested right now. Uh, there is about $20,000 in cash. Uh, that is simply because it's more difficult to get um, smaller pieces of securities for investment. And the money market now is well over 1%. And so leaving it in the money market until something else matures, as you can see here from our graph, we've got a million three 50 that is going to be maturing over the next year. And so that is a good portion of the portfolio. And those reinvestments will all be able to take advantage of our current high interest rate environment um, from that standpoint of 275 to over 3%. Because if you remember the graphs we looked at, it looks like it's almost certainly going to be 9, 12 to maybe even 18 months before yields start to dip again. Um, and so a year and a half from now, we'll be in a much uh, better place uh, from a yield perspective. Also keeping in mind that we've had a very good yield compared to where the bank rates were, um, and Marie can brief you on that, but compared to where the bank rates were and where the money markets rate were, rates were, excuse me, uh, five to 10, 15 basis points if you were lucky for the whole two years of COVID, we were in that 1% 1 to 125 range. And so while we're dragging behind the marketplace a little bit now, that's the idea of a strategic portfolio is, is you miss the very, very high, but you also miss the very, very low. Um, and so we get a good consistent yield throughout the course of those uh, up and down motions in the marketplace. So uh, portfolio is still everything allowable under Public Act 20. Um, you know, we're currently invested out to the maximum maturity of, of five years. And that's it. I'm sorry, I didn't I didn't hear that. Could somebody repeat it for me? Our Michigan Municipal, that's Brighton Schools or Brighton City. I don't remember which one, but that's uh, that's one of them, yes. Uh, let me see if I can pull it up here. Bear with me just one second. So, Mike, as you're thinking through that, what's the range then of yield? What's the highest yield we're in now? Well, we just, we, excuse me, we just did some trades today that were in that that three to three and a quarter percent range. Um, I don't have the trade ticket in front of me. Our operations hasn't done it yet, but I was talking with investments. And so that would be the high is in that above three. Um, and then all the way down to one. Well, let me see here. Let me answer one question at a time if I could. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. 
not that important like <laughs> Brighton area schools. That's that. That's the bond that we have. And then the yields to answer the, your other question. Uh, I'm just going to pull your your statement up here for a moment. If you bear with me, it's your last report. Marie has a copy of it here as well. Yeah, I can't open my email, so that's okay. I've got it. Okay, so anywhere from, I'm seeing uh, 17 basis points, 24 basis points, 45. Um, and those were bought at a year ago, a year and a half ago when we were at our very, when the market was at its very lowest. Um, but as I said, we've also got a scattering. There's a 284, a 271. There's some 1%, so there's a 312 in here, a 311, uh, 276. Uh, so, and that's what, sorry, go ahead. Oh, no, thank you. That, that's what I was looking to understand. Okay. And, and as I said, Marie has a copy of this report. So uh, if you had questions about specific yields uh, or things like that, but, but as I said, the, that million three that is maturing over the next year, over the next 12 months, it's all going to come back into the marketplace where we are now, which is well over um, 275. Uh, and, and a lot of it's over 3%. So it will be uh, a year from now, we will be get having a, you know, if not twice the yield that you have now, uh, we'll be closer to that 3% uh, as those things blend out. Sounds good. Jamie? I have a question. I think this might be more for Maria or I guess somebody else on council. This money is used for these investments. This is all for like our retirement and I mean, does this ever get brought back into our? These are our reserves. Budget reserves. Mm -hmm. So it's just separate from any kind of pension or OPEP funds. Okay. It's just the, the funds that we have either, like some of them are, are the stuff that's been committed mm -hmm. or you know designated for certain things by council. Some of it's the un, undesignated. Um, some of it, because we fluctuate, you know, as far as when we get our revenue in, uh -huh. um, and we have a fairly substantial amount of revenue right now that is unspent on the the water funds, you know, so those kind of things flow in and out. There's also some DDA funding in there. I mean, this is everything. This is DDA, water, sewer, um, okay. general. So, so you'll read meter investments right there on some of those from that sheet on page 24. Gotcha. Okay, so, so this is like where the money is sitting. Mm -hmm. It's based, okay. Yep. Well, from different funds. Thank you. And it's blended. Okay. Right. Thank you. She keeps track of it separate there, but it's blended into yeah. the yeah. groups that were on there. Right. Thank you. How long have we been with Mike and Meter? Did we do this about five years ago? Um, it was before the pandemic. When did we start, right? Really? In 19, I think, Marie, right? Okay, so it's not quite five. All right. The idea was to try to get a little better than the, well, keeping it safe, a little better than the channel and the bank can get a little smaller. Right. That's all. And then we weren't going to use it. Right. We started investing through Michael. This is And our finance director will notice we've actually got decent returns compared to what we previously had in the order of tens of thousands. Yes. Um, I mean, I still, prior prior to getting um, with Meter, we were very heavy into CDs um, and that sort of kind of investment and into government um, pools, which we're still in the government pool. You'll see there's Michigan class. Or I might have it as MBIA. Um, so that what that pool is, it's, it's kind of a um, it's a similar it's a similar kind of thing to like a money market. They 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 also invest in commercial paper. They also invest in the federal um, instruments. But all of the members are pooled together, uh, and they're all municipalities, and their board is controlled by treasurers and finance directors from cities and townships all over the state. So we're in there. We're in meter. 
And then most of the rest of it is just in straight, you know, basic checking type of accounts. And that's more of our needed cash flow, you know, on a daily basis. Any other questions for either Marie or Mike? Mike, thanks for joining us and for doing a good job. Appreciate it. Thank you, Mike. Thank you all very much. And if anybody has any additional questions, just uh, get them over to Marie and we'll get them addressed. Thank you. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. We are down to item E, which is approval of the agenda. I don't think there's anything you need to add, is there, Justin? Not that so I would like to make a motion to approve the agenda. Can we accept one, please? Move by Sanaa. Second. Second by Griffin. Any discussion on the agenda? Seeing none, please call the vote to approve the agenda. Michelle? Yes. Griffin? Yes. Rob? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Keo? Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. Uh, item F is declaration of any conflicts of interest. Do we have any declarations this evening? Seeing none. No public hearings this evening, so we're down to item H, which is non arranged participation. I know that they are here for item M1. Is there anyone online, <coughs> online that would like to speak this evening? If so, can you please use the raise hand feature? Yeah, I'm not seeing anything. I'm not. Uh, no one's there. All right, if somebody does, we can come back to it, okay? Okay. Um, down to communications in the packet on page 16. Uh, we have our meeting calendar. I'm not sure if there's any comments on the meeting calendar that anyone wants to make. Go ahead, Jim. Dan's name is showing up under your box. Oh, yep. <coughs> I'll take that picture. Thank you. Mm -hmm. He's still going to get the valet parking though. <laughs> okay, to move on to reports, we will bring back up our finance director, Marie. Welcome. Whose computer is finally working again? Right. Hello, Good evening. So, you have in front of me the last quarter report for last fiscal year. Um, you'll get, you'll see more of that information again in about six months when we do our audit. The only thing I need to add, or I would like to add to this, is that this morning we had the kickoff meeting with. Um, um, thank you, no, clear go. And I just personally want to thank council for giving us the approval for going out for that. I'm really kind of excited to see how it's going to work and how it's going to do the modeling and how it just you know, kind of think about it. So thank you. Yeah. Any questions about what's in here? I think I must not be reading um, your tables correctly, but starting on page 21. So you've got a column with the original budget, a column with the amended budget, your today balance, available balance, and that percent budget use. So I think, so for just the first with general fund, it says percent of budget use 100.51. That means we took in more revenue than we budgeted. We took more revenue than we budgeted. By twenty one thousand. Okay, so. All right, so do an example. Why would that? <coughs> a lot of times it's other revenues. Um, it's one time things that we don't budget for. I think usually we budget about five thousand for other revenue. I want to say is close to fifteen. Um, so that's that's. And the important. second state payment. Mm -hmm. There's always more that we don't. Mm -hmm. So we did we did do some amendments on that. So does that not actually mean for that row, does that not actually mean percent of budget used in the same way that it does for the other lines? Correct. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's, I, it's inverted. Yeah. Okay. Because I was thinking if we, okay, right, use more than 100%, then one of those numbers below percent budget use should have been over 100%. Yeah. But it wasn't. So no, because it understands on all. Yeah. Things. Right. So we want to be like, ideally, we're close to slightly over 100 in revenue. And we're close to slightly under 100 in expenditures. So then the actual the thing that I the number I think I thought that was is, is that actually the 92.01 down at the bottom of this total expenditures percent of budget use is 19.01. Yes. Okay. So that's thank you. And, and the red 336 is actually good. Yes. Yeah, we were able to save 336,145 more across all that between the additional revenue that we received. 
and not spending everything we budgeted under the expenses part. <clears throat> Although we, we will see some adjustments on that between now and the audit for accounts payables that haven't been paid out yet. Thank you. Congratulations on your nomination. Yeah, I was pretty surprised. Nice to be recognized. When do you think you'll find out? Uh, the bio went in today. I think the voting is in August, and then the award is at the fall conference okay. in the end of September. Very nice. I would like to know who nominated me. I don't know that yet. They would tell you that? I'm pretty sure they tell you, yeah. Or yeah. Anyway. yeah. I okay. think they tell you. I think they tell you anyway. Yeah, good. good. I think. I'm not sure. And then some of these funds have just not been reconciled with the latest utility bill, right? Correct. All right. So it was a couple of months then of payments. Yep. Got it. Yeah, the, the, the utility bill that just went out in July still needs to be moved back. Gotcha. And I do that when I start doing a lot of work. On page 26, you've got you have our unassigned fund balances is under Java fund. It's the 1.6 million or close to 1.7 million. Is out of that what we would take what we want additional for the fire station, or is that going to be somewhere else? Uh, 26, you're looking at unassigned fund balance for 1.6, yes. Yeah, so it would be coming out of there. But that's also the thing that we like to keep at 50%. Well, or in, in this, um, Kind of balance sheet information. If you go down underneath where it says available for non operating uses, our our policy fund balance of 15% is 562,350. So you actually, and, and, and if you start breaking down all of the, we've got you know, some liabilities, we've got accounts payable, um, and that sort of thing, and things that we've assigned for different things, you're looking at 1.3, not 1.6. So it's in the, the second, the next one down. And I didn't, um, I still kept the main budget and, and expenditures and revenue in this. A lot of times I put it to zero, but this year it just skewed things. So I thought, well, I'll leave it the same and then we'll take a look at it next time once we have all of our accounts available in there. So, of that 1.3 million, is there some number that, um, like, would you recommend taking that down to zero or no? There's some reason we keep that, some positive number. I don't know what it typically is. Yeah, well, okay, so by policy, we're looking at around 562. The um, bond rating agencies, for example, always call out the fact that we're at 30% or 40%. They, mm -hmm. they, they like this higher amount. I would say probably somewhere in between the two. You know, I wouldn't go down to zero, but that's just, I kind of like having that, you know, extra cushion. But if you're, if you're looking, as we talked in the workshop about you know, trying to save a million or say we have a million saved. Right. We've got the 188 down here mm -hmm. at the bottom right. under cash available specific. And the, and the 300 could be re could be blended into that, yeah. reassigned. And then you know if there was some fund balance from this year. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know that extra 300 we could get close. Yeah. Because that that but you're talking about the amount that was set aside for the Stabilization fund, the access fund, yeah. For for the tables on page twenty six, does that does that reflect the three hundred from so year twenty one twenty two or whatever it came up to be actually in August? Yes. Yeah, she's got the remaining budget from the yeah. And you'll and the, the part that you see there that's unearned revenue at 495, that's the um the, the recovery funds that we're gonna be using on second street. We just have moving that. Okay, that's part of the audit part of the audit work. Um, and, and I did want to call out, I, I'm sorry, I didn't call it out in the in the report. Um Justin and I had talked, you know, during budgeting, we were all excited that we probably were over our um, OPEB funding requirements. Not anymore, but we're not significantly lower than where we think we should be, and we should recover from that. You know, not too much trouble, but, but we took a lot of success. Because of the market? Yeah. 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 
I'll tell you when everybody gets their hopes up. Other questions for Marie? Thank you very much. Give up the great work. Uh, next up is our public services superintendent report, which is I yeah, Justin's gonna handle the night. Yeah, they, 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 they got vacation this week. Okay. So we have to go out. Um, does anybody have any questions on the report? I would like to thank him for getting the trees trimmed on the serpentine portion of the path. I didn't notice that. Um, I wanted to ask about the mowing of the grass along the path for that event in Philly schools. Do we, do we do that in two phases? Like the park, the park from the park around the boardwalk where the path is going to come from grass? Looks like it's more recently mowed than the part from the boardwalk. They, 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 they do that in just in jets, okay. just depending on how much time they have. It's, it's much better. It's much better. Right, right as you leave the boardwalk, the growth is in. Other than that, that, that's what yeah. um, we, uh, we did, did have a walk, not last week, but the week before with OHM. Um, to review the area of the proposed grand view connector. Um, just take a look and kind of see what the terrain looks like out there. Um, and then uh, Brian Services was in today to uh, start working on uh, relaying the bricks in the circular seating areas in Milgrave Park and clearing out the uh, brush and uh, the lawn. <coughs> Uh, we were at Community Park this morning and I noticed that the dump rocker is missing. I didn't know if it was moved for service, but um, I could send you a picture. I mean, like detached up the spring. So there's barely like a coil coming out of the ground. Okay. I don't know if that was a vandalism thing or an intentional thing. I, I, I have not heard. Uh, Josh, have you heard anything about dump rocker? We will take a look into it. Any questions? Okay, tell Tim thanks. Well, so I'm Pete Fugin, um, Community Development Manager. Who's up next? Michelle, how are you? I'm fine. How was council? Good. That's good. All right, you have my report in front of you. And before I tell you about my grandbaby visit, um, please let me know if you have any questions. <clears throat> I don't know if this is a question for you or maybe it should have fallen under public uh, services superintendent, but somebody raised the question to me uh, about the potential annexation of Sloan Kingsley. Um, how, if at all, that would affect our current water restrictions? So, are they watering that sort of thing? Is that like, what role does that play in that? So, I mean, I, I don't think it would change our water restrictions. Our water restrictions are in place now. Um, would it like make it even so we have to go, you know, something more extreme? Like, would it further burden that? Or no? Okay, so, go ahead. I was going to say, I, I wouldn't think that it, that it would make it more burdensome, except for maybe more enforcement. Mm -hmm. um, we, we do tend to start acting enforcement once that number starts creeping up. Mm -hmm. um, Kind of at the beginning of summer or spring, once people start turning on their sprinkler systems. Um, but I mean, it, it, it definitely, I don't think it would go away. And, and Part of our calculus would be we want to find new well sites on that property. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we would almost certainly need to find one to support it. It's a, it's a capacity issue. If there isn't found capacity, um, then because of that same annexation is right, right. Never possible. <clears throat> yeah, I also brought up this idea of the mirrors. I think you included that in the supplement. Mm -hmm. The mirror, the mirrors. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah. So yeah. you wanted to know. Yeah. Go ahead. Just I just wanted, I guess, to say that out loud. It's because it's been on Part of our discussion on parks and rec are these please wipe your bike stencils. We talked about them before on council. It seems like feedback we've received is we're not sure how effective they are. People seem like they're faded, they will be you know, they wash away. We, we're maybe looking at decals. 
one thing we wondered about is would people be more, more likely to see it if it was a sign like our social district sign that just goes up seasonally and in more targeted places so something that's more at eye level as opposed to something that's on the ground we talked about that um, the resident who's been concerned about this reached out to me and specifically called out the beer grotto as a place where there are all these potential collisions and the servers are coming outside to their seating area just because of the way that's designed I don't know to what extent the city's been in communication with Beer Garden about their specific concerns or if any other commercial residents or commercial business has reached out about that. But then I remembered a recent visit we took to Brighton and when we were approaching an alley, there was like this big convex mirror and I thought, oh, this is really nice visibility. I don't necessarily have a specific place in mind, mm -hmm. but for example, Beer Garden, again, I think we have a conversation with them. I don't know if it's across the city barriers, but if it's something they'd have to agree with or to even know if it would be helpful to them. Anyways, I've just been thinking about the whole thing. You've been talking about stencils, maybe an upright line, maybe a mirror, just to figure out what would be the ones. So um, I don't have any recollection of Beer Grotto um, uh, bringing any concerns to our attention about any conflicts. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, if the goal is to have people walk their bikes, then we need to talk about how are we going to enforce that, whether it's signs. Um, uh, let me step back. If you want them to stop and make sure they walk bikes, then you're talking enforcement. Mm -hmm. And then you need to bake into that the, the uh, necessary uh, elements or components in order to then have an enforcement. Um, if it's a safety thing and not so much, <coughs> excuse me, want to err more on the side of let's try and make it safe for people, there's still going to be an enforcement component to that. Mm -hmm. If you don't have that, we can we can go through lots of different iterations of the stencils and the mirrors and a number of, of different things that we haven't even thought of yet today. But if we're not enforcing it, it's not going to produce the results that we want to work. They're all good ideas, though. Absolutely. We should, we should keep them in mind. You know, we might have a spot. There will be a new business uh, opening up. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> um, next to the film work. I can't remember the address. It's the little white house there. The alley cuts between. It's going to be a spiritual spa. So there will be massages and things like that. But they also do uh, counseling and spiritual guidance. Um, it is going to be operated by um, uh, one lady is a pastor, and the other one's a massage therapist. If I remember right, but that's their their uh, their take on the uh, on the massage therapy community aspect of their business. So that should be opening probably before Labor Day. I'm not really working hard to get it there. Um, if they really want to try and be open before extra day, I'm just not so sure that they'll be able to get their seat of all before that. So we're working on it. Any other questions? All good. Thanks for Thank coming. You. The sheriff report is written in the packet. Does anybody have any comments or questions on the sheriff report? Yeah, I'll keep this going then. We'll flip the page to page three and drop down to city manager for a Welcome back. Thank you. Um, does anybody have any questions on the report? So, this ADA audit of the parks, uh, the Parks and Rec meeting, Becky, the chair, <coughs> was pretty adamant that we had done one recently. So, we had um, one of our insurance representatives go through the um, parks to evaluate them for potential liability. Um, so, that, that, that's kind of one take on it is, yeah. is, is where are we potentially holding ourselves under liability? He was not going through to evaluate for um, ADA compliance specifically. That, that type of, it looks to see if you still have the old merry-go-round and metal things and tall metal slides that people can fall off. We'll, 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 
where people like to trip. That, that sort of thing. So similar, but not the same. Okay. Um, so I, I already covered um, brand services. Um, we, we are going to be open uh, this Saturday for absentee ballots. Um, I think as of today, we we're around the 450 ballot mark returned. Um, I think the, the number that we had included in the um, packet was um, <coughs> the correct number. Um, but uh, <clears throat> and we've issued around 1,100 as of today. Um, so there's quite a few more to be returned still. Um, the deadline to uh, file for city council is tomorrow by 4 p.m. Um, we are still working on getting the summer newsletter out where we sent it over to up to the printer. Um, we have to approve the final uh, run and then it should go out to print. Um, but once we have that, that final proof, we'll send it up to city council so everybody can take a look. Um, we should also have our polos here shortly. <laughs> Um, it's taking a little bit for, for the printer to, to get those done, but um, hopefully in the next week or so. Um, Did we have any other, any other questions or topics? Okay, seeing no further, we'll keep open if you do take us on, we'll come back to Justin. Um, I had a short report from the packet. Um, and uh, I was out of town for a period of time, but the one meeting I had that I wanted to share with everybody was a subset of the DDA and the 3045 Broad Committee um, to just kind of talk about the conference representatives of this common sale, the group that's interested in um, developing the 3045 Broad property there over here in the creek park. Um, they are interested in uh, a pre development agreement with the DDA and the city. And um, I say that those three parties, because we own part of the property, the DDA owns part of the property, and they're obviously the ones interested in development. What they want to do is um, have a six month agreement period with uh, the ability to extend that. 120 days if necessary. They want to go through a detailed <coughs> financial analysis. They want to validate some of their assumptions. They want to better understand um, some of the uh, TIF capture options and how the, the money that's generated by the project could help pay for uh, both the brownfield eligible items of the cleanup of the site, as well as um, some of those stiff dollars coming back to the DDA and our city for the purpose of constructing a parking structure. And the parking structure would be, if you remember the concept plan, it was proposed on the other side of Broad at Forest, right at the corner there. But they proposed a two story structure somewhere on the order of six to seven million dollars in the cost is their estimate to build. And their idea is that the, the tenants of the residential development could lease, lease spaces as one part of income back to the city and then the tip capture could be the other. But they want to they pay for a somebody that specializes in working through tip captures. Um, was it PMC? Was that the PM environmental? PM environmental. They want to know to bring that, that consultant on board and allow us to work through scenarios together. So I, I mentioned this to the DDA uh, last Thursday when we met. We had met with Common Sale on the 20th and then had the DDA meeting on the 21st. And I said I would mention it to you here uh, at this meeting. Um, they have taken a draft of the, well, first of all, the city and or DDA has been involved in redevelopment agreements before. We had one with Foremost originally, 
which ended up not going anywhere. And then they had another one in Norfolk, uh, which they took a slightly different path. They had more of a charrette approach designed into their window of their pre development agreement, if you recall, where they went to the public and solicited ideas for the use of the property. Common Sale um, does not desire to go through that approach. They feel like the, the information that was gathered a few years ago is still relevant and that their proposal reflects a lot of what was discussed at that time. Um, but they've asked us to review a, mar a markup of the previous development here that we had with Norfolk. So at, at some point in time, I don't know that it has to be next meeting, but in the near future, um, Michelle, I think we're going to be sharing the, the draft of that, right, with the DDA? It, it's actually not going to be shared. Well, what I mean is we're going to be discussing oh, that. We'll be discussing, yes. Yeah. Yes. And what I'd like to do is, is share that draft agreement with council as well, since the three-party agreement will require all three you know, groups to have input. Um, I don't know how anybody feels about that. It's, a, you know, it's, it's an exploratory period to allow them to get a little better handle on some costs and it would allow us maybe it's an opportunity to understand how um, the tip capture from that property could be used. Um, I don't know if anybody's interested in that or not. It would be, it, there would be no obligation for either party or any party to go forward with anything. Um, what they're interested in is having, you know, exclusive control such that we aren't talking to anybody else that they're in the same period. And typically uh, they would offer to pay some amount of money for that exclusivity, if you will. That top of the hand. Yeah. 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 So Michelle had said, I mean, you know, I'm passing other people around it. I need to do lots of on the BCC. Um, and so I think two things that stand out to me um, that it seems like they're proposing $1,000 for the exclusive option with an okay. option to extend no additional money. It looks like Norfolk put up $25,000 and an additional $10,000 if there was needed an extension. So I think. I'd be interested in conversations about what that dollar amount is, given what the conditions are around the real estate, that sort of thing. And then uh, it looks like they also struck out the parts about community engagement processes outside of just the traditional development review process. So I know we did a lot um, with um, Norfolk, and I guess that was sort of before my time. I would be inclined to add in some community engagement. Okay. Those are my thoughts. So when, when we when we did the last charrette process, um, and even when we uh, had who was it, Peter Allen, um, Professor at U of M and his students do some uh, concept planning for the, the property. The biggest takeaway to me is that. The charrettes led to the desire for that to have people on it, meaning for it to be homes, some type, homes or apartments, whatever you want to, where you want to put them, as opposed to using it for a different use, like 100% commercial or park or whatever. There was a desire from the community to have people added in the downtown on those properties. And there were people that preferred condos or might have been okay with apartments or both. Um, but that was my biggest takeaway from the shred process, Jamie. And then and then the, the access to the park, obviously, and maintaining the ability for people to move through there and not feel like it was an isolated spot, you know, but a continuation of our accessible downtown to the park. Those were the big takeaways that I think have kept throughout all of the discussions on the use of this property. And, <clears throat> the, um, you know, the, the, the one thing that makes this unique, and I guess you'd say there's a lot of things that are unique, but in this case, you know, we own the land. <clears throat> if, if we had just sold the land, they'd be subject to going through our standard, bring a proposal to us, go through the planning commission. That would be the public process. There would be no charrette or no additional type of process. So, which isn't the whole reason we own the land because <coughs> we saw the value in it and wanted to 
be more involved with its development mm -hmm. than some other piece of property in development. I mean, you purchased it at some point. It's not we, like we wanted to take the industrial use out of, out of play. Mm -hmm. So we, we bought it to get rid of the building type that was there in the downtown adjacent to the park that we were developing. Mm -hmm. And you know, the desire that's come through that full turn, if you will, is to, to make it residential of some type mm -hmm. with the what's the term mixed use component on the first floor or somewhere. But um, <clears throat> anyway, I, I I I'm open to all comments are valid at this point. Obviously the, the, the goal of, of my talking about it today and my report is to make you aware that that um, they requested that we review the agreement and um, see if we can, they would like to enter into a, a six month period to do that. Mm -hmm. We probably can't take 90 days to come to an agreement. You know, they're looking, they're, they'd like us to do it faster than that. Um, so the fact that you've read it is great. It doesn't mean we would ultimately take a vote on you take <clears> 90 <throat> days to take a vote on. Is it a voting thing or no? Yeah, I would think we would go last. I think we do, we defer we would and let we yeah we let because we're, we'd be a party to it because we still own some part of that land. Yeah. Um, I think we let the DDA and common sale kind of work through some of the stuff and then have it come here last would be my that's what we did it before would be my thought game. Okay, but then that piece of it we're proposing to sell or transfer to DDA in November on the ballot. So then at some point we are not part of it. Well, you still are because of the 80 90 grand piece. The what piece? The 80 90 grand piece. Oh, oh, because that is not subject to being transferred. Or Correct. Right. Correct. Okay. Okay. So the DDA, the, the DDA floated the question to you right. to right. the council and uh, words to the effect of if this is something we decided was important, how would you feel about it? <clears throat> They don't really need it to be part of it. it. It can be part of it and it can be developed without the ownership transfer. Mm -hmm. um, and are they including it now in any of like is common sale considering it as yes. part of what they're working with? As part of a, 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 a parking area. Uh, what I don't remember though, and maybe it's like it's part of the sort of healing of the onion that needs to be done, whether that's all public. All private or okay. And ultimately, they'd be doing this through a PUD, so there needs to be some public benefit component that needs to be derived that could mm -hmm. be applied to the you know Grand Street corridor or something mm -hmm. in the vicinity. But... Okay. I'm glad you brought that up because that's one of the things that we'll be asking the PDA and Council at a future date is to to start to articulate. What those, what would you consider public benefits? Because it's not like doing a, a, a greenfield development out the township where open space is usually that's the big benefit generally. You're not going to have open space as the primary benefit here. So having a list of things, knowing what those are, and being able to give the developer uh, that direction will be very helpful. Uh, so we'll probably try to get a draft of that in front of everybody after the DDA meeting and second meeting, second meeting in August. Let the DDA wrestle with another version of it a little bit. It's kind of what I'm thinking. But if you have thoughts or comments that you want me to convey at the DDA meeting in the show, please share them with to have the other places. Um, I don't have anything else to add to my report. Does anybody have any questions for me? Okay, we'll get, uh, uh, are there any council member reports? Any comments anybody wants to make? Okay, we'll move down to item K, which is our consent agenda that has three items on it. Donna usually covers this, so okay. why you gotta step up? I'll do it. All right, great. I move we approve the three items on the consent agenda. Bills and payroll in the amount of $280,000.80. Homecoming parade road closure permit and the relocation of well house VFDs for an amount not to exceed $46,550. Is there a second? Second by Thank you. Okay. 
consent agenda items are voted on all at once. Would you please call them? Oh, Joe Yes. Corral. Yes. Hubbard. Yes. Griffin. Yeah. Keel. Yes. Thank you. Motion carries. We have no unfinished business, so we're down to <coughs> new business item M1. Thank you for your patience. Uh, consideration of the Kids Land Montessori on Baker Road. Somebody wants to make a motion. Put something on the table before discussion. Unless you'd like an update, we can have a shot about it. Well, based on recommendation of the Planning Commission and the information provided by the applicant and staff at this meeting, July 25th, 2022, uh, pursuant to the requirements of Article 11 of the Zoning Ordinance, I move to approve AP 2021 for 2214 combined preliminary final site plan for kids. Kids Land Montessori, subject to the following conditions. Submittal of a revised site plan addressing all conditions of approval recommended by the Planning Commission. Uh, the applicants offered to dedicate the public right of way uh, is accepted. And the comments noted in staff reviews dated July 20th and July 1st, 2022. Carlisle Wardman review dated June 20th.
still coming into a a bigger site, right. um, and you've got room for those most of the time those excess vehicles. In this case, we sorry, may I just may I just add one thing? It also is not the same as a start time and an end time. So students are dropping morning picking up throughout the day so it's not like all 40 students have to start at 801 like the yeah. public schools. I'm not necessarily even worried about those specifics. I just don't want to be in a situation where we're asking more of you than we ask of the schools. Mm -hmm. the, you know the public schools they cause traffic problems too. So is there a formula we follow? So or, the thing we have to remember with the schools is zoning we don't have any control over it. The only thing we have control over when it comes to school development are the public utilities. But is well, how traffic. much traffic can well, queue up? Is that part of the zoning? Or how much traffic can be backed up? Is that a we, zoning? That becomes strictly zoning doesn't play into it. Then it goes to planning commission. Well, we'll, but we had a traffic report, for example, when they built was anchor now beacon or reading yep. one. Cornerstone, right? I was getting mixed up with terms of it, but we were allowed to have a traffic to require a traffic study to Correct. understand the impacts of the traffic flow. So, I mean, if I don't know, like, it, is the client, and I mean, it seems like there are probably people to I don't know how much I was talking about on planning commission, but again, I don't want to be in a position where I'm making a decision that is singling out somebody in a way that, right? I don't think we are in this particular case. So the letter, the July 11th letter, is the management plan. In the packet, where it says "wrap up pickup management plan." Mm -hmm. Okay. And what what time does it open? Seven o'clock. So that's the earliest, and somebody would be dropping off. And what time does it close? Six p.m. Six p.m. Okay. What? I also think, as I recall from the presentation in the past, that you have a lot of students that are dropped off together. So it's not even 40 hours total, we're correct? The lot of students are still working. So we don't have to check into the community. How long have you had the location in Dexter Township? Uh, uh, By the way, thanks for coming. Thank you for coming. Thank you. Uh, me and my wife, uh, we moved in here in 2004, and we've been operating uh, this business since 2006 in Dexter Township, uh, right on uh, uh, North Territory Road, uh, close to the coffee shop. Uh, Any other questions? More than, six, more than 16 years. Yeah, it's a long time. It's great. Uh, just one question I always like to ask. Do you have any questions or concerns about any of the conditions? Uh, not right now. Of course, I'd like to improve the business capacity. And if we come to decide that we like to increase the number of enrollment, we will first contact the administrative staff at the city of Dexter and make a appeal or application. And if they approve, um, we'll move forward at the right now. Right now, I don't have any questions. Thank you. Okay. Anything else to add? Any further questions from council? Okay, so we have a motion by Zach, second by Griffin. Sorry, Michelle, second by Griffin. Uh, I believe you read the motion on page 73, both of us. Verbatim. Please call the vote. Griffin? Yes. Harab? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Kia? Yes. Motion carries. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you for your investment in the city. Thank Good you. luck. Thank you. Thanks for waiting. Oh, it's always a pleasure. It's fun to hear you guys work. So, new business item M2. It's consideration of a memorandum of understanding for the uh, low income housing water assistance program. I move the city <laughs> enter into the memorandum of understanding starting on page 125 with uh, do, 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 the low income housing water assistance program. Yes, through the Office of Economic, of Community and Economic Development, Washington. Yes, that 
Justin, yeah. Yeah. jump in here, you don't mind? Yeah, so um, Washoe County uh, Department of Economic for Community Economic Development uh, reached out to us um, to see if we would be interested in participating in this program. Um, the idea is that it would be minimal risk to the city of Dexter, but they would work with um, the Michigan Department of, of Housing um, to basically assist with um, funding uh, or, or reimbursing the city for anyone in, who lives in the city who might be potentially at risk of being, having their water shut off due to not being um, They would pay for back, back utility bills um, to prevent shut off. And then if we receive payment from them uh, for one of our residents, then we wouldn't be able to shut, shut them off for 90 days. Um, but to be eligible, someone would have to be 150% or lower um, of the um, state poverty level and or the federal poverty level and um, and or meet one of the other uh, requirements um, that, that they've outlined. Um, it seems like a like a good program. Um, I, I talked to their utility building clerk and uh, she, she didn't have any issues. Remind me what the poverty level is for. I just pulled it up. For, uh, yeah, it goes by person and family or household. Yeah, okay. So family of four is twenty-seven thousand seven fifty, but if it's one point five, it's forty one thousand six twenty-five. Right. Yeah, so so what, what's the um what drives the timeline of this? I know this is for fifteen months to September of twenty twenty three. Uh that's the, that that's what the they propose. That's not being by a federal to the, the money. It says the money is tripled down. Mm -hmm. Is that a federal? <laughs> that, that, that's my understanding. Because mm -hmm. um, I, I think they're entering into, into the same um, agreement. <coughs> with, um, the state, they, the well, state. Well, well, the state and, and the other municipalities in Washington County who, who are utility providers. I just wonder what the core program is. Is that? Do we know in a typical year how many folks have challenges with water that would benefit from this? Yeah, so um, it, it, it was worse through COVID. Um, we had significantly higher numbers of folks going to the, the, the shut off list. Um, since then, I would say we probably have between five and 15 people um, per per utility bill cycle um, on the shutoff list. Okay. Um, that, 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 you know, like, oh, it, it, it's not, it's more than just, oh, sorry, I was late. It's, it's, um, you know, we have to prompt them to get payment. Thank you. Cool. Thank you very much, Laura. Other questions for Justin? Please call the vote to approve. Parab? Yes. Hubbard? Yes. Griffin? Yes. Michelle? Yes. Keel? Yes. Motion carries. Thank you. Um, new business item M3, a discussion of the 8050 Main Street property in the lease for hotel. Sure. So this was provided as a discussion item based on. Uh, Previous discussion on, on, on the topic. Um, council expressed an interest in uh, having an understanding of what the previous uses of the property were. Um, so Josh reached out to uh, some of our local historians uh, to, to get a more fleshed out idea of what that property has been used for. Um, you can see those uh, uses uh, listed on page 135. Um, but obviously, most recently, the property has been used by Hotel Hickman. Um, and we've entered into um, several um, lease agreements with him over the years. Um, and the most recent one is coming up for renewal this year in October. So, kind of in advance of that, I wanted to make sure we see where council was at in terms of entering into another lease agreement at Hotel Hickman. Were these last four uses like restaurant based? I don't like the monster Laura's Jake's and Jake's place. 
Yes. Kevin right. Sheriff was also food based. <laughs> for, yes. More snack. <laughs> uh, but yeah, the, the food, food industry. And do we know what year that started? At what time the Sheriff's Association team became up? I believe uh, around 2004. Yeah, it's 2003, 2004, I think, when he said it came out. So, yeah. Actually, our former clerk's wife was the cookie monster. Yeah, so my thoughts are I would prefer to sell or some sort of mechanisms that they can buy it without having to come with a stack of cash up front. Now I say that with a couple of asterisks. I recognize that it's a very important building in town. And so I'd want to include part of any sales agreement a right of first refusal in the future. So if they decide to dispense of it, we could have the option to purchase it. Uh, also language that if they decide to remove the building that we would have the right to purchase the building and get it to the historical society reserved somewhere. Uh, and my thoughts are because they're leasing it, it's difficult for them to do certain improvements. Like they, when they did the, the overhang, they had to stop it short of the building because there's a walkway there because we have it. And so it's, it's really challenging. I also don't like the fact that city staff have to go there and maintain the building. I think we, we, we've got enough property for them to paint and, and worry about now. Um, so I prefer to get it back into private hands. I guess it really hasn't been in private hands, but I'd like to get it off of our concern list, but still protect our ability to ensure it's it's an asset for the community. I don't see any favor or something like that. So what would be the prevention for them to do enough work in there that is not recognizable as what it was? That's something that we can write as part of our, it could, it could be deed restrictions or conditions of sale. So we can we can say the exterior envelope or whatever the specific things that are important for us, we can spell that out. <laughs> and to what level then it becomes that argument you made that you know it would be easier for them to maintain or do changes to it that then they will be not desirable. How would you go about setting a sale price? Well, uh, when I bought our house, we had to have an appraiser come in and say what it was worth. So we, we get that start there. Yeah. And, and I understand that it, it would be a challenge to come up with that sack of cash. And it's not a big property, but still, it's one of the reasons why the property is in 150 Jeffords and the bottom of the sold because they want to sell it instead of lease it to folks. Um, so again, I'd be comfortable if there's a right to own with a limited period or, or something like that to make it less painful so that they can to be a successful business. If I recall right, I may not be recalling right now, but if I recall right, when we first decided to lease it, the concept was that it could be hopefully an incubator space for somebody to start a business with the idea that they would actually take that business to a bigger bed. What it's become in all four of these, really, if you go back to the cookie lobster, is a small, very similar takeout venue to that we put in the The idea that there wasn't seating there for a long time. Folks were once they bought the flower shop, well, they seated next to it. They have this how you see it, and they're like, I for a long time. Was on a percent take out of the site. It's a less bad 
and it stays in there, but take out as we go. Very popular choice. But they express interest in buying it. Well, that was, that was going to be my <laughs> next question. Was I, I don't know if he has or he hasn't. We'd have to ask him. Maybe Justin, you could reach out and get a feel for what he's thinking. So the, the other thing is that if we were to enter into an agreement to sell, it would have to go to a vote. Yeah. Well, scrap that idea then. I know. <laughs> I honestly don't mind owning it and leasing it, just from its historical perspective. I the, the, the part of the exact town of all maintenance does resonate with me because I'm in there a lot for breakfast at least once a day or once a That's day. Yeah. Well, on the weekend, <laughs> first breakfast and second breakfast. Yes, first and second breakfast, right? Uh, I go off on the weekends, but it does need it does somebody does need to keep it up. It's you know, <coughs> it falls on us. Whether it's the windows or the door, or the, yeah. Well, if that, Daddy, I just want to make sure the rent is competitive. Right? See, I see. I don't know. Oh, that we've increased it. It's six hundred dollars a month right now. We're charging. Or I forget. I think it's six eighty-five. Yeah, that would know. be interesting to understand so, too. To get a sense of is that even fair market value? That's a fair data point to try to figure out too. All right, well, we'll let the, 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 oh, go ahead. Is there a reason why we can't? I mean, I don't know. I, I've dealt with a commercial lease in my day job in the past where it was major things like the HVAC and, you know, the sump pump were on us as the landlord, but every, you know, smaller things were on the tenant. Is there a reason why we can't do that? We could. I don't even know what the current agreement says, but I mean, we've been. Mostly responsible for it, I think. We could change the terms if that's what you're. Yeah, proposing. I mean, if, if that's a concern, and I agree that you know we have plenty to maintain our staff to maintain, and I don't think that's a terrible ask, especially if they want more control over the building. Which again, I'm not. We, we don't have the sense of whether they do or not. So it's just. I like the option better than a solid way to probably get out of. Being in a historical building, being out of the city. Okay, so maybe you can approach Scott. Get a sense for what he's thinking. Do some research on the other one. Okay, to move on to number four. We are back down to discussion of the fire station, which can be a continuation of where we were in our workshop. Or if there's something else we wanted to touch on. So I, I think the big thing that the, the DO sets up is um, how would you like to set up the next few meetings? So we, we, we do have a, the one regular meeting with likely a work session, or, or maybe, maybe a work session. I think it's basically we have a draft question, right? Mm -hmm. Somewhere in one of these packets that I've been looking at, right? Mm -hmm. It's just a matter of figuring out the whether we want to go with amount or millage, right? And is that where we're at? Or so we need to send in a millage. We need to figure out how we, I don't know, the two weeks we can figure out our operating we figure out this assessment to you. Let me think about how much that is. And then I'd also like to know what, to get a more exact estimate of what it is you think we can set aside. So, was it? I think we could get to a million. I think we could get to a million, Jimmy. Okay. Yeah. 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 I mean, if, that, if that's the number that you think would grab the attention of, People as we tell the story that we saved a million and now we need to ask for the rest. You know, but there's certainly there's certainly general fund dollars that could be pooled with the what was it, 488,000 that's already there. And there's certainly half a million that could go towards that if that was what we wanted him to do. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Yeah. I guess I'm probably ready for it to be a discussion item at the next meeting. Well, it's good. And if we it's find out, you're, 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 sorry, yeah. consideration item. Yeah. Sorry, consideration item. Okay, consideration item. And if I guess we find out we don't get somewhere. So, what day is our next meeting? August 8th. Okay, yeah. we're until the 16th. Correct. So, I guess if there's some. We'd have to do it in the next five days. Five days. Five days. Yeah. Yeah. I, think we're, I think we can get to a question. I'm pretty confident we can get to a question. You know, the, 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 obviously the amount is something we're discussing. Um, for a good portion of this discussion, I've always felt like, okay, well, you know, what if it doesn't pass then what? I kind of like to have an idea of what you guys are thinking that would be if it doesn't pass. Are you know, we just sitting on what we have and, or are we going to try something different or, but oftentimes, you know, we want to know what if we don't vote for it? What do you do that? And, and maybe, maybe the answer is we're going to take that million and we're going to build on the million and figure out what to do from there. Okay, I, you know, it might be that simple. That might be the fallback. But I, I think we should have some consideration or some thought of that. Maybe we're not unified what that is, but I'd at least like to throw it out there for everybody. Yeah, I'd like, I think M1, M1 at the next meeting needs to be consideration of ballot language for fire station improvements. So we're going to, how we're, how we're applying to fire station, where do you want to say? Uh, did you have a hand up? I do. Yeah, this no, maybe, this is maybe, you know, past this discussion, but Justin, when I'm, I'm at some, after this, want to make sure we're focusing on, and I know we will. Sorry, let me make sense here. Um, like, what kind of educational materials we put out? Because I know I was just with some friends who live in Burrito Township, and they had a really nice, like, educational flyer that came with all of their absentee mm -hmm. ballots. And I think that that's something really important that we could do. And I would definitely be in favor of doing something like that. So I want to make sure that we know what date that goes on. Just I'd like to see that built into the following meetings so that we have something to, to send out the ballots and or the applications or whatever, like something, you know, well, in, in that same I, timeline. I, I think that's really important because I think I think we all need to be going around the neighborhoods and talking about it and asking for the votes. Well, an idea, I mean, you could also do a public meeting. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I mean, for sure, in addition to it, I just thought all the way from the kid, yeah, for sure. One piece, one important piece of information that's compelling to me is if you look at our historic middle grades just for a city of Dexter, did you hear a lot of people saying my taxes keep going up? They keep going up more and more taxes. Well, oftentimes it's due to countywide villages. Mm -hmm. yeah. Um, no so what? It's due to countywide. Oh, John, just so it's not system. that the city has been increasing its general operating millage or any other special millages. And so I think seeing that timeline of graph format or chart format or something to say this is actually what the city of Dexter has done these past 10 years or whatever. We, we did increase the general a quarter mill about five years ago. Mr. Carson really punched me in the head from that one. Well, it seems like this conversation settled down, so this is where I'm going to jump in. So I, I threw out kind of the the what if spaghetti on the wall. What if we don't want to build a big station? Why don't we just jump out of the AFD? Mm -hmm. I did look through the interlocal, and there's no specific language in that says we're responsible for legacy legacy costs. It just says we have to give back any equipment we have to the DAFD. Um, but the reason why I started with that is that. I felt everyone had to, oh my gosh, we don't want to pay for an entire fire station or fire department on our own. Because we get we get a benefit now of four on-call folks and we pay for less than a third of that. We pay for one and one and a change person, but we get the benefit of having four. So even though we would be building a bigger station and subsidizing that thing, we're getting subsidized on the service. From the other communities and it's something that they have been subsidizing since the mid 80s 
when they did not have a fire station and the response time that, that if your house caught fire, it burned to the ground and they had to pay higher insurance rates. Um, likewise, as I look at it from a, a, the planning and public benefit side, the more opportunities we have to keep more firefighter bodies in our community, that's gonna result in better responses. We had uh, not this last EAFD meeting, but the meeting before that, we had five or six of them in the room and there's a car accident at the intersection of North Territorial and Dexter Pickney, which is, you can walk out the door and see it. All the phones, they were out there in 30 seconds. So that's why for me, I'm happy to have a training facility here because it increases the, the likelihood that we'll get a better benefit out of the day. So yes, we're building a bigger building, but the operating costs, we're not paying as much as what the benefit will get. That's it. Well, I think we put in a lot of good work on this. So I'm gonna appreciate people's patience and allowing some of that to occur. Um, but I'm excited about putting the question out there and whatever the number is, we need to do it. I think in the next packet, can you put our guiding principles and our opportunity statement back in there? Mm -hmm. I did run and doing a lot, but we spent time on those. That's not it. They don't change their mind about anything, but in terms of bringing things full circle, I think it might be nice to just bring that back together and remember what we were doing. Yeah, we talked about the opportunity statement. Maybe we need to think of the public. We were doing that. Yeah, you know, <laughs> and I haven't been part of this for a while. Now, don't embellish it. We haven't really been talking about that one. <laughs> That's what I do. So I, I well, I don't know. <laughs> That's true. We have not talked about that. Okay. Um, new business item M5, discussion of the Baker Road property and uh, Mr. Lawton's presentation from last meeting. All right, I'll lead off. So, uh, this this opportunity for that property, or the idea of some type of development on that property, has been out there since as long as I've been I've been here twenty years. My wife and I've been here twenty years. It's been out there since at least two thousand three or four. <clears throat> nearly 20 years. Um, some people have said, will say that they're interested in what goes there because it's right next door to me. So now I'm going to back up there. Um, some people will say we should we should be involved in the development of that property so we can control part of what happens on the property. There's a, there's, a, there's a sort of a fear of Associated with the fact that it's right on our, our neighbor, our doorstep, and that something's going to go there that we can't control if it isn't if it aren't part of the process. That that fear. I'm not saying everybody feels that way, but there are people that that sentiment drives them. Um, I haven't lost one night's sleep over the development of that property in 18 years. Okay, not one time have I woke up wondering what's going to be there. Not one time have I stayed awake wondering what's going to be there. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's sort of like when the folks at Corman Farms came to us just a few weeks ago and said, hey, we're interested in coming into the city. I personally am not looking to annex anybody that doesn't want to come in. Um, I don't think we necessarily need to grow in that fashion, per se. Well, at least it is, it hasn't been my my priority. I've thought about the redevelopment of the parcels that we have, the DDA plan that we have. I think the sticking to that plan is pretty solid. And I think we're, we're seeing the benefits of that as things shape out with Grandview and the one place that we've developed and um, some of the places along the next strand of road corridor there. But redevelopment, I think, for me, is the priority. But 
I don't think I've ever said no to a community that wanted to have discussions about something. And I think in fairness to the fact that at least the last time I talked to supervisor, he felt that there could be some common ground for the two communities to get in the room and talk over the opportunity. And I'm certainly willing to be a part of a conversation or two. I don't want to mislead anybody into thinking that that automatically means there's going to be annexation that occurs. Because I think that would be, I mean, unless everybody knows that's what we want to do, in which case, you know, raise your hand and we can, you could just say that, that could be what, what the board sentiment is. I'm, I'm certainly willing to be a part of discussions with them to see where, where do I go, what the goals are and objectives and long-term thoughts are. Um, I asked Donna Fisher if she could recall how involved the property owner was when like the Webster Township 425 was put together or when the, what did they call it in the side of the was a proclamation or promulgation agreement. Right, and that what we had is that that's what Dexter Crossing was brought in under was a promulgation agreement if I remember. And she didn't think that the property owner was that involved in the discussion. She thought it was really more between the two communities to work out things. Now, I don't know what your vision of the discussion would be. Do you? And I think it's something that you know, if if we assume that we're going to have a discussion style, we we'll start there. I'm interested in what your vision of how that takes place is. I mean, do we do we have three council members participate? Do we have do we want to have full board discussion, their board, our board? And I I ask all of this for, for input because obviously the more people that you involve, the more difficult it is to do, and probably probably the slower it goes. Just because of scheduling, um, <clears throat> you know this this fire station question and putting time towards um, towards the promotion of that is way more important topic to me than this annexation idea. So those are I'm willing to sit at the table. I'm happy to be a part of the top, uh, conversation. But I'm, I'll let you know it's it, it's not my first priority in terms of long term vision. Uh, I I I think that a lot of things that could be done on that property, some are probably doable, some are probably not going to be as doable as they're advertised to be doable. Um, it, it's it's a very desirable goal to say you want something to be attainable, but. You know, that's not that's not necessarily a promise that can be kept. You know, the market affects a lot of things that we do, and how you know we don't control everything in the market. I'll stop. So I'm willing. I'm willing to participate. I think I think in the interest of community, be good, be good neighbors. I think we should offer to communicate on it. But I'm not by any means saying it's something that we have to have to do. Unless there's a desire to do it, unless we find it's a desire to do it. So I guess I'll jump in next. I looked around the table, although I don't know where Mr. Gregorio lives. I'm probably the closest to the center of Dexter Village of anyone in this room. Well, because I, I have a couple of feet on you, and I did that by design. <laughs> we can open the windows and hear the music on Friday. We can walk to everything. Okay. Yeah, well, not now, but eventually. Um, so I am very much, and also from my background in planning, very much in favor of keeping compact. It does a lot of good things. Um, internal redevelopment is best. At the same time, this will probably be the last large parcel that can ever reasonably be added to the city. Look to the north, it doesn't make sense. Look, there's rivers and developed areas and other things that, that make it impossible. 
So I, I do want to be involved in and make this happen in a way that makes the city happy, the school district happy, Sio Township happy. Um, the school age population dropped in the city of Dexter last census because people who live in the big houses aren't moving out because they can't afford taxes anywhere else. And then eventually that's going to affect the quality of the schools. If they don't have enough students, they're not going to have enough funding. Uh, likewise, as much as we want to redevelop internally, we have limited opportunities to convert houses to apartments or do large areas for seniors. This is an opportunity to do those things, to fill in missing holes that we don't. So I'm very enthusiastic about shaping it and making sure that it's best for us and, and the other entities who are involved. What I would say I want to get out of conversation is the vision that Sio Township would have to make them whole. So if you're a township and something get annexed, it's like you're getting a leg or an arm chopped off. And it feels sad, you've missed it. So obviously part of the thing that, that they want is to get some of the tax money from what's there. Some of the things that I remember from last time was they're really interested in park space. So that's probably still there. They're also always interested in trails. Um, and I happened to see the trail map and the guy who's doing their trail plan said, oh my gosh, if you do that, you can do a trail over here and a trail up there and it connects these two things are trying to connect that they don't know how to connect. So my goal would be to try to listen to find the things that they would want to make them whole or make them enthusiastic about it. Uh, also, I would like to find out the planning process they would like to do. And again, this is a planning nerd in me, but there are ways where you can create a joint planning commission so that City of Dexter and Sio Township would be both involved in planning the thing and then it becomes annexed. And it likely would be done as a planning and development because of flexibility. So that would allow us to give more terms and make sure we get the benefits that we're expecting to make both parties happy out of it. I know that I know that the parks and preservation of some of the high quality uh, tree areas are very important to side. That's their number one. Goal. Yeah. Sorry, yeah, thanks for waiting. Not a problem. Um, building on what you talked about, Zach, uh, I think some very preliminary, very superficial conversations that we've done. Um, uh, his assessment of planning is that they would probably like to do a, um, I think it was Doug that I spoke to, um, would like to join the planning commission. Um, the question I've got is um, who's zoning would you prefer? Who's master plan and who's zoning? So the ours was the thought as it comes into us. Yeah. Although there, there's definitely ours. There, there's, the, there's this there's this weird thing. So normally joint planning commissions are a perpetual thing. We mm -hmm. set up and you have two communities and got one planning commission for both townships or city and a township. We could write a zoning ordinance just for this area, mm -hmm. which would be weird and crazy, but that could be an option. Well. One other thing, the, the word the word that appears second on this slide is conversation. I think it's always good to have conversations. I don't I, I don't think we're nearly at a decision point on anything, and I think it's worth a conversation. Sorry, Jim. Yeah. Uh, sometimes when you talk about like pain points, it's helpful uh, in the concept of trade offs. So it seems like they may have a pain point. They're not able to do what they want to do in Sio Township because they don't have similar department parks. They reached a pain point. We don't have well, the infrastructure we need, water sewer, whatever those things were. So they reach its pain point where they can't create their own wastewater treatment plant and we can let in something else. So they need something from us. So I mean, I'd be curious to know if you know. Do we feel like we have a pain point where we need something from them? I guess some people feel like they've articulated that with like our range of housing options. And then I think the question is like, well, to what extent is it the responsibility of the city to make sure that the housing and what role does the city play versus what the market play? Uh, and then obviously you have trade-offs. So we, you know, we just gleaned on this, what impact does it have on 
what is the cost to us in terms of our infrastructure and is there ultimately a net benefit for us and how do we measure that? And I know those would be difficult for us to measure. Sayo Township did have a land preservation village from 2004 to 2014. I'd be curious to know what would, what are the alternatives for this piece of property if it doesn't get annexed to the city, given what they're able to do in South Township? Has that come up? Has it, do, do they have a, you know, thus far village of the past, what are we gonna do? Well, if we don't annex them, what are they just gonna keep waiting until we do? Is there something they can do with the property in terms of people are afraid of what's gonna happen? Doesn't seem like anything can happen. Do you know that? Well, the shell probably has a, we all probably have a different answer to that, but. I think we probably have a similar one because we know what Mr. Lundin said as far as this map. He could go a couple of years to work this through, but he wasn't prepared to, interested in or financially able to do a decade of trying to come to a decision. Um, <clears throat> the township made offers before he got the property. To purchase it? To purchase it for what they purchased it for. And, and did Sire Township know what they wanted to do with it when they were going to purchase it? Sire would make it for the nation, the entire thing. But the developer at that time would sell it. Um, I did not know if the township has made that offer again or will make that offer again to Mr. Lutton. Yeah. So this scenario where it could be. Preserve. I mean, there's actually lots there's of scenarios. scenario where we preserve the person who owns it. Decides to sell it back. <clears throat> um, it, I don't think the developer is purchasing property for a certain amount of money. Township is going to provide. Maybe that's all. Yeah. 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 Ye
if we're all interested in the conversation, then what I would probably do is reach out to the supervisor and tell them, hey, we'd like to have a conversation. So, you know, do we just want to have like the idea of three and three, or or do you want to do the whole board at first? Then we'll whole board discussion. Jack said, no. We can only do those pre committees. What's the Composition. Like for pre application meetings, or like project, what, what is that composition? Um, Michelle, I think it's usually for pre meetings. Usually, city council people, two planning commissioners, right. um, staff, which is myself, Grace, DPW, Tim up here, and Warner, Carla Warner, OHM, DAFD. <laughs> I would maybe start with that and figure out who can head off that list if there's if that's too big of a team, but it at least the city council representation, if it's on par with what you do for pre op, mm -hmm. to me that seems somewhat analogous. Well, so then there's you know, let me, let me throw another um throw another word on the table, not to gas on the fire, but how transparent do you want these meetings to be? Or are you or are you worried about? Are, is anybody worried about whether we meet with them? And if they're you know if there's less than, are they advertised meetings? I'm just asking what your vision is. I mean, so pre-op meetings are not are not typically advertised, right? Pre-op meetings, like, pre-op pre -op meetings, meetings are, 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 are not public meetings. They're not advertised. But since we do them virtually now, um, as well as we do the high res, um, um, I do the court all meetings. That way, if somebody in the council is planning or uh, even a member that attended um, wanted to look at it, they have that opportunity. And my, my thought, my, my suggestion would be that a subset of this board, three, goes and talks to a subset of their board three and has an initial conversation or two about their goals, their objectives, and then we then we summarize it all and bring it back and then see if that makes sense to meet in a different way from there. That would be my suggestion. That's what I'm thinking. Okay. okay and if this is for the board with the or just he, I, he can be there. I'm all, yeah he's the property owner. I have no problem with, with him sitting there and listening to us talk or you know that's I don't have that. I don't have a problem there. So thank you. Um, I needed a few minutes to gather my thoughts on this. Um, so I I like the idea of conversation. I'm very. I was hoping for when Mr. Lutton came here, for us to have better idea of what he's thinking. As a property owner and developer, a real estate man, there is a level of benefit he wants to get out of this that will make sense for him to move forward, right? And then for me, it's really important to understand the goals and objectives of Sion Township, as you mentioned. I really like the idea, you know, three of us, the three of them talk about that and understand that because I couldn't get that out of that conversation we did in a meeting with Sayo um, maybe a year ago now or something like that. A little bit of that I got, but not much. And I think it is important to understand what he is thinking, right? If he's thinking something, and that, that was my hope of asking um, to add that to the agenda, if he can come and talk to us, is to have some understanding of what he wants to put out there even if it is a range that is the profit for him, right? Because if it is something that is too outside of our, that are our goals and objectives, then why to have a conversation? If it is something within that, that I think then maybe it is good to have a conversation. I'm hesitant for um, annexation in general of, of that property. Um, and for me saying that 
being on, at the table to have a conversation and understand because there is an impact on us is more towards wasn't necessarily with annexation in mind, but for being afraid of annexation either way, but it was better understanding of things. I felt we had at least to some level with the previous developer to a point that we had a better point of consideration. And with Mr. Lutton, I couldn't get that out of the what he brought to us. Um, so I don't know if it is going down the path. Um, I want, also want them to understand that if we are going down the path of conversation, is not necessarily that we are working towards something. I, I would like that beginning to be that, what are the things on the table? What are their goals and objectives in SIO? What is Lawton's vision for, um, for this development? Okay, well, if there's general consensus, those answer I have to I want to say it's actually promising that they don't already have plans to show. I agree. And by that, I mean once they've spent $10,000 to start playing, they're tied to that. And that was the challenge with Mr. Hausler is that he had his plans, he knew we could fit his houses on it, and it's really hard to move them off from that. So I actually see it's very promising that he's like, I'm here to talk, here's what we're thinking, because he's. Yes, but he's also a real estate man. So there, he has done some calculations of what is profitable for him, right? If it's 200 homes, will he step out and say, okay, I'm not doing this. If it is 600 or is it 800? And my worry, the way he was talking was like, he was pushing for more density than previous developer proposed. I just would have liked that because of the history of this and how much we had been involved to have that a little bit more um, conversation from him or more ideas from him. He asked us to trust him in some things. I would have liked for him to provide more for us to be on an equal level. Michelle, how many units was the plan we saw in Sile a year ago or 15 months ago or whatever it was? Was it like 195? They were originally, I have to work backwards. They were originally over 400 that they wanted. Oh, the township right. would only, the township was 125. They came down. I don't, I have to look at the site plan. See, this is the hard part of this. Okay, this is the hard part of this because there's so many versions of plans and, and we have no idea really what they could have gotten approved for or what their, as you say, what you know, whether it financially works, let me just say it that way. Whether it's profitable or not is a different question, whether whether it's financially viable. But you know, I, I think I think what, what, what they what they didn't say, what they didn't say is that they found a way to get rid of wastewater on the property. They, they discontinued their attempts to do drilling to see if they could have a, I think a, a groundwater discharge as opposed to a surface water discharge. Mm -hmm. Surface water being to a mill creek or a river as opposed to groundwater. And and those get expensive, that, that continuation of development of that, plus they'd have to permit it. At some point it becomes easier to ask the question you know, what if we were to connect the text? Well, those were some of my thoughts going on. I can just interject one other thing. Um, when the township was telling us 125 units was the max the township would go, um, that was based on the master plan at that time and their zoning ordinance. They've gone to a master plan update that does look more favorably on uh, development along that they were before. I don't believe they've got the zone ordinance in place to implement that for them. Um, <coughs> um, but they would do what the city's doing, which is work for them. 
uh, updating their ordinance in order to make that next one. Whether they're on the same time frame, that would work. I don't know, but it, it could, in theory, allow the developer to have more than that 125 break in or something they want to initiate. I don't know. Well, I mean, at one time, this was all one acre lots. Or and one. I think that's not 125 that came from and that. There was some vision of how that would play out with the preserve certain spaces and that type of thing. And then if they could do the wastewater treatment on their site, that's when they got closer to buy 400. Um, so the township always looked at it as 125 and based on their one acre site. You, they, because they have their own treatment plan, the township could look at them doing cluster option where you may have the same number, but smaller lots and big in pods, if you will, so that the spaces that were more uh, less appropriate for development, more appropriate for preservation of those uh, natural features could be accommodated. But that ever will be the township under that previous master planning zone forever than the four hundred dollars. I don't know that that was done. Yeah, so I have uh, the August 2020 site plans pulled up. Maybe here are some of the latest ones. So one uh, had 263 units, total a combination of single family lots and a variety of condos ranging from 325 all the way up to 580,000 in, um, in cost. And then they also had a separate single family lot plan that had 197 uh, lots ranging from 450 to 600. Um, and it looks like this was maybe more this cluster option. I mean, so one of them said the, the 263 units of the density was 1.08 density. Um, like per acre, but it does look like it's, you know, it's clustered. Clustered, so they have this preservation area. Um, so up at the next 263 or 197, that seems pretty reasonable. It also has the multiple family, because they have multiple family. Which so the one that had 263, uh, <coughs> 48 single family, 41 luxury condos, 41 detached condos, 31 efficiency condos, and 102 age targeted condos. That might have been the same. Adam Bonnie, anything to add? Smart, smart. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're both learning very well. <laughs> By the way, feel free if you want to say something. Raise your hand there. Throw something at me. Right up over there. Okay. All right. Well, if, it, if, if there's a general not around the table, I'm going to reach out to the supervisor. Style and let them know that we want to have an initial conversation or two to compare goals and objectives and thoughts and that kind of thing. Does that make sense? And then, if, assuming he's still in agreement with that, we can then figure out which which of us are going to go and represent. That sound good? Okay. Sound okay? Um, and, and by the way, I would think it would be three council members plus staff, corporate staff, that need to support that work. So, um, I'm going to start council comments with our uh, students tonight. Mm -hmm. yeah, council comments about the new group. Do you want to introduce yourself a little bit? First meeting? Hi, I'm Adam. I'm going for my sophomore year. Welcome. Um, <laughs> Um, I guess the only thing I wanted to say is I think we're, I think it's interesting to start looking at all the projects like you guys have already been working on before I joined, and it's cool to learn about. I'm excited to see what's going on. should be a part of What? Not? Jamie? Don't forget to vote. I just, on uh, one second, I realized that, oh, we're going to be out of town. I guess you should say that.
Zach? All right, this does not need to get in the minutes, but we, we were reintroduced to the wonderful term charrette uh, with respect to 3045 broad. That word has a fun, fascinating etymology. It comes from French, as you might imagine. And it was born at the Ecoli de Beaux Art Architecture School, where the professors would have a little cart that they would come through, and the students would have to put their projects on it. Little cart charrette. And being architecture students, they were way behind and working constantly, so they'd actually get on the cart and try to finish the drawings and the models as they're pulling the thing through the building. Yes. And uh, fortunately, I don't think they had exactly blades back in the day, but they did when I went through, and I got a couple of scars from that. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, we're back around in that range participation. <clears throat> anyone in the audience here? Michelle Marie, you guys are good? Okay. Hey, does anyone online want to speak this evening? And just unmute them and make sure they're here. Otherwise, thanks for joining us. I got stalled for a minute, so just one second. Okay. I'm not saying anything for you, Mitch. Okay. All right. Then I will seek a motion for adjournment. So, <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to go. All those in favor, so we're trying to say hi. 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 Thanks for good meeting, everybody. Have a great week. We're going to be honest there,